from the start of my social media fitness sharing accountability journey thing i've received a lot of questions along the lines of how do i get my dream body what do i do to get a body that i'm proud of what steps do i take how do i get started how do you stay motivated I got you. A few months ago, I made a video kind of outlining steps that you can take to get the body of your dreams. But I feel like the topic itself is such a huge overarching thing that covers so many subtopics that one video obviously isn't enough. So here we are. Before I start this video, I do want to say that a dream body to me is more a state of mind than a physical manifestation of your body. Stick with me. I know this topic is very aesthetics based inherently, but I swear, I promise you, I will give you tangible, actionable tips that you can implement into your own life and ultimately get towards your dream body, or for me, a state of mind of being happy with your body and how it looks. These pieces of advice aren't meant to overwhelm you. Implement what you will. If you don't want to implement any of them, that's fine, but take it day by day. Make small changes in your lifestyle that will fit your lifestyle because ultimately what works for me may not work for you it's not a one size fits all but i promise you all of these tips are pretty simple to add into your own life also lastly i do want to disclaim that i'm not a certified personal trainer or certified in nutrition or dietetics or anything like that i just like sharing what works for me with all that being said let's get into the video My first tip is to stop listening to everyone you see on social media. That is a very overarching thing to say, but let me explain. I see a lot of influencers nowadays, especially in the fitness industry. Not all of them, but a lot of them will try to feign some sort of qualification or certification just because they've sold a guide or they've made an infographic on the kind of food that you should eat on a daily basis. And even if they don't actively kind of pretend that they're more qualified than they actually are, a lot of them won't explicitly disclaim that they are not qualified. I try to actively seek out people who are qualified, who have an educational background in the stuff that they're saying. But that's not to say that everyone who isn't qualified or educated on paper don't know what they're talking about. I think it's easy to see all of this information being placed right in front of you, take it for face value, and then sometimes also get overwhelmed because there's just so much of it going around. Everything I read that is meant to be factual or a piece of advice about what to do with my body, I take it with a grain of salt and then I do my own research. Trust me, nobody cares about you as much as you care about you. It really is worth it to just take the extra 20 minutes of your day to research something that you see that you don't know if it's true or not, um, or you don't know if it's completely true. Even with the stuff that I'm saying right now or in any video, if anything I say is meant to be taken as fact, honestly, take your time, step out from the video, do your own research. You know your body better than I do, so. My second tip is to always be proactive in your recovery. Definitely something that I don't necessarily follow all the time even though I should and I tell everyone else to do it but I don't follow it myself but honestly recovery is so important to your fitness journey and any PT will tell you that anyone who is educated in the field will tell you that recovery essentially is the step that preps you to train better the next session and in the long run so I'm questioning why I even neglect it so much when I know it's so important but recovery is not just, you know, stretching after a workout. It includes so many things like eating well on a rest day, eating well after a workout, foam rolling, massage gunning. Being proactive in your recovery is important for so many things, just like overall well-being, for example. But when it comes to getting your dream body, it ensures that your body is ready to put in all the effort that it can into your next session and it allows you to train more and in the long run it's also really important that you maintain that kind of attitude to recovery yes i'm talking about deloads please do it please they are so great for allowing your body to take a step back so you can promote progress in the long term. I made a video already about my deload routine so you can go check that out if you want to. I will link it somewhere on the screen or in the description box. While we're on the topic of recovery, I do want to thank Hydra Guns so much for sending me one of their massage guns. I think having a massage gun is a really easy way to integrate a recovery routine into your everyday lifestyle and Hydra Gun really makes that possible by making their guns super accessible. They are high quality but at a price point where it won't break the bank 
if you're trying to get one. I personally use it after my workouts, but you have the option to use it before or during or after. Tailor it to what you feel like you need at the time. Let me tell you, it is so quiet. When I'm using it, I barely hear it. Like I swear you will not hear it when you're using it. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly show you how quiet this gun actually is. Did you hear that? I bet not. It's like no disruption, but you're getting all the benefits of like a muscle massage. You know what I mean? The gun itself is also very light so that it's easy to use and like maneuver around your body, but not so light that it feels cheap. I do also stretch and foam roll as part of my recovery routine. So I'm not saying that you absolutely need a massage gun, but if you are considering getting a Hydra gun yourself to step up your recovery routine, make sure to use my discount code in the description box below to save some coin. Let me know if you get one using my code so I can thank you personally. And once again, thank you so much to Hydra gun for gifting me one of their products. Before we move on, I do want to apologize for the lighting changes. I work with natural light, so anytime the sunlight changes, that affects the whole ambiance of the video. So if you did notice it, that's why. Anyway, my third tip is to align your goals with something that isn't purely aesthetics based. This piece of advice in particular is really important to me because I was there, I've been there. Um, I was there a couple of years ago where I only focused on what my body looked like. And I realized that if you start from a place of not liking your body and wanting to change it, you will never be satisfied. There will always be something that you want to change, something you want to improve, something that can be tweaked a little bit more. That paired with the fact that your body changes every day just based on what you eat, how you sleep, how much you exercise, all of those factors can really be damaging to a person's mental health, especially if you are like me, who was a young girl who grew up not knowing anything about body mechanics, physiology, just very natural changes in body structure. So I know that this tip seems kind of counterintuitive, but I swear when I did a 180 on my mindset and I shifted my goals from one that was aesthetics based to one that was based on my strength and how much I could lift, my body transformed on its own. It didn't need me to be hyper-focused on aesthetic goals to look the way it does today. Tip number four, something small is better than nothing at all. And what I'm trying to say with that is that little efforts matter. I'm trying to live by this a lot more, especially during lockdown. You won't always be in the right headspace to exercise. And if you do exercise, you won't always be in the right headspace to go hard or intense every single session. Instead of going into fitness with an all or nothing mindset, I think it's important that you give yourself grace and do what you can, essentially. And I know this tip is a lot easier said than done. I know I myself have had sessions where I've planned to do something really intense, like a HIIT workout, and then ended up feeling really gross just before the workout and then just skipped it entirely. The point of a fitness journey, and in my opinion, having the body of your dreams, is to maintain it for the long run. And in the long term, it really doesn't matter if you chose to go for a 20 minute walk on one day rather than spending an hour and a half at the gym. Because in the long run, consistency is what matters, not the intensity of any single workout that you do. If you choose to skip all the workouts that you didn't feel motivated to do, you were too tired to do, that adds up too, because that is the opposite of consistently getting some sort of movement in. And I guess within this tip as well is another lesson of patience, because I know everyone wants their dream body really quickly, but in order to have a body that you are proud of, that is healthy, you need time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen after two weeks of an intense workout guide. It happens after years of hard work and consistency. Okay, we're on the last tip already, you guys. We're at the end of the video almost. My last tip is that action creates motivation, i.e. you shouldn't rely on motivation to kickstart your journey to your dream body. I feel like this tip consists of like two parts, but the first part is I feel like a lot of people will always say, I really want to start my fitness journey, but I don't have the motivation to do it. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you have motivation to do it. You just need to do it. You need to take action. And more often than not, taking action and feeling any immediate effects of gratification or achievement 
is what will give you motivation to continue. And I think that's where the second part of this tip kind of comes in, in that motivation will only get you so far. So you've taken your action, you feel motivated, you want to keep going. And then at some point in your fitness journey, you feel like you've hit a slump. You're thinking it's not worth it. I haven't seen any further results since the last time that I saw a change. This is when the discipline kicks in. I think that discipline is above all in any journey, any goal that you want to accomplish. The reason I've been able to keep going and keep making progress despite not having motivation, um, not necessarily seeing results all the time or feeling results all the time is because of my discipline. Motivation is so fleeting. I think it is so unpredictable that your entire health journey should not rely on it alone. Discipline is something that you create. Motivation is out of your control. But if you do want some tangible ways that you can try at least to trigger some motivation, some discipline in you, I would recommend working out with a friend, following YouTube workouts, because then you don't actually have to think about the structure of your workouts. You don't have to plan it yourself. You can just follow someone on the screen who is doing it with you. And just starting small, doing a 10 minute workout so that the endorphins that you get, that rush that you get after your workout, can fuel a 15 minute workout the next time. If you didn't get tired of me talking and made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that these tips helped you in some way, no matter how small or big. And let me know if you start to implement them into your actions in your everyday life. That's all I guess, that's all I have to say. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a comment if you're feeling generous and I'll see you guys next video. Bye.